Ladies and gentlemen, some of our most ridiculous stories have actually come out of Florida. This one is not going to be an exception. What y'all are going to hear is just going to be flat out ridiculous. If you can't handle my commentary or my jokes, I get it. Then this might not be the channel for you. You might want to exit the video and just let us enjoy this video in peace. While we talk about this woman who was supposed to be a leader and a pillar in the community. Because when you step up for public office, then you are agreeing to be something more than just an ordinary citizen. And I hope I said that properly. Because this woman that you see was actually a Lake Wales city commissioner. And I hope I pronounced that correctly. Y'all know I don't always pronounce everything right. Lake Wales, W-A-L-E-S in Polk County, Florida. Is that correct? If it's not, then just bear with me. But that woman that you see on my screen right there, let me see if I can look at look at this picture here. Man, it must have been a hard knock life for us. Must have been a hard knock life for us in the face. Boy, her face looked like somebody slapped up with three grade sandpaper. Sheesh. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little bit mean. But let me show you guys a picture and why I bring up this woman's looks. When people say, well, what does that have to do with anything? What we're talking about is deception. Okay? Have you guys ever played Mortal Kombat before? We're talking about deception. And I want y'all to look at this face right here. Look at this face. And y'all tell me, let me see if we can get a side-by-side -side comparison. And y'all tell me, would you think on first glance that these two people were the same person? Makeup is the devil. It comes straight from Satan. It comes straight from Satan's bowels. I don't know why people continue to slap this bull crap on their face, which chokes out their pores, which makes them look like something that they don't naturally look like. But I think if you're talking about really loving yourself, then I think that you should love yourself for the way that you look and wash your face. This woman, I'm, okay, let me get off of that because y'all not going to even hear the damn story. <laughs> but the individual that y'all see right there, when you wipe that damn mask off of her face like she's Jim Carrey, that is 41-year-old Kristen Fitzgerald. 41 years old. Would y'all believe that me and her are about the same age? Because that woman literally looks like she old enough to be, I don't know, 54, 60, maybe. Pushing 60, pushing, pushing it pretty close. This woman that you see, Kristen Fitzgerald, a Lake Wales City Commissioner, picked up an 11-year-old boy. She picked up an 11-year-old boy from his house and took him to the honey house. Did I read that right? Let me read this again. And I'm getting this from WTSP.com. I am not making this up. What the hell is the honey house? I'm going to Google search this real quick. The honey house in Florida. Let me see if I can find this out. Okay, um, I Google searched the honey house, H-O-N-E-Y, and I can't, I don't know what the hell the honey house is and why she be picking up an 11-year-old boy. Yeah, that sounds creepy, does it not? I mean, could you imagine if I said, uh, uh, some, some man, uh, Terry picked up a, an 11-year-old girl and took her to the bunny ranch. It's just the words 
don't sound right. Maybe he was taking her to an actual ranch that had bunnies. I don't know. Maybe this is a house that actually, like, like I don't know, that houses bees and beehives. I don't know. That's a little weird. But y'all look this up on WTSP.com. It says she picked this boy up from his house. Hashtag, where's the mom? Where's the dad? Hell if I know. And took him to the honey house. She then accused the boy of touching a now 13-year-old girl in a sexual manner a year ago. That's according to Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd, which we'll hear from here in a minute. She accused this 13-year-old, excuse me, the 11-year-old the boy of touching a girl who was two years older than him in a sexual manner. I'm going to be real honest with you guys. If girls are more mature than boys, and I'm not saying this wouldn't have happened or couldn't have happened, it just seems a little weird that at that age, I don't know if y'all have ever had kids around that age, but girls around that age are usually a little bit bigger than the boys, are they not? Like at that age, the little 11-year-old boy hasn't hit puberty yet. The 13-year-old girl has hit puberty. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but I'm just saying usually the girls are a little bit bigger than the boys at this age. So I don't know about that story. Now, the boy denied the woman's accusations at which she threatened the boy with a gun. So he said, no, I didn't do that. And she threatened him with a gun. See, this is the part that y'all really got to pay attention to. When detectives spoke with that woman right there with the, with the hard face, the affidavit says that she denied threatening the boy and simply told the boy to stay away from the 13-year-old girl. It says child, but I'm assuming it's a girl because just... I guess it could have been a boy, but I'm just going to hope for humanity's sake. And I hope the LGTBQRST ain't going to get mad about me saying that. But I hope that it was a girl in this accusation. Just anyway, that, that sounds all kind of wrong. Let's move on past that. So she denied threatening the boy and simply told the boy to stay away from the 13 year old. Fitzgerald says she keeps a gun inside a case in her car and the gun slid out from underneath the seat while the boy was in the car with her. Now that sounds like total BS. I'm going to read that again. This grown woman, 41 years old, said that she keeps a gun. Let me grab mine real quick. Hold on. Hold on. So I want y'all to imagine this. She said a gun was in a case. So not even in a holster. Because I'm sure she knows the difference between a case and a holster. She had her gun in a case. And the case somehow magically slid under from underneath the seat. And so did the gun magically get out of the case and the boy saw the gun not in the case? Because if you ask me, most 11 year olds, if you saw a gun case, let's think about this rationally for a moment. Rationale. If a gun is in a case, do most 11 year old children know what a gun case is? I think not. I think most kids might think there might be money inside of a case that we know as adults that a gun goes into, like a lock case. So how would he automatically assume that? I don't know. But it doesn't sound right, but let's keep going. She reportedly told detectives that she pushed it back under the seat with her foot. 
Now, according to the affidavit, deputies found the gun inside of a brown bag. A brown bag. What is this, Sonic? The brown bag special? A brown bag on the driver's floorboard of Fitzgerald's car. Why would you... Why would a gun... That's a big difference between a holster, a case, and then we find the gun in a brown bag. Now, for those of y'all who don't like my Sonic joke, whatever, because I know they don't do the damn brown bag special no more, but that's the only brown bag I could think of. I don't know. But she said the gun was in a case. 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 Not a holster like this one. That's a gun holster. This is not a case. And I don't have a brown bag, but I'm sure a brown bag don't look like a case or a holster. They found it under the driver's side floorboard. Now, deputies say that the gun was loaded, but a round was not in the chamber when it was found. Now, during an interview, with a Children's Advocacy Center, the affidavit says that the boy Fitzgerald called him on the phone and wanted to speak to him and not his mother. Ooh, let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. During an interview, the affidavit, hashtag not my words, don't go sending me emails threatening to sue me talking about DJ Just J, you don't have your facts right. You wasn't there. Yous don't know what you's talking about. This is not my words. Okay? According to an affidavit, it says the boy said that that woman called him on the phone and wanted to speak to him and not his mother. All of this can't be a lie. All of this can't be fabricated. Now you have to ask yourself, why the hell would a grown woman, excuse me, excuse, er, excuse me for a moment. I'm a father and I'm a father with a gun. <laughs> Let me put this damn thing up. Get myself in trouble. I am a father. You telling me that somebody is going to call either my house or my daughter's mom's house and say, I don't want to speak to the mom. I don't want to speak to the dad. I want to speak to your daughter. Really? On what planet do they do that at? Huh? What planet do they do that? Have y'all ever heard of anything so asinine? That deserves an ass whooping by itself. Any grown person, she's not related to them. Or maybe she is. I don't know. Let me not speak too fast. I want to know how she knows them. I want to know how she knows the family. And how was she able to go pick this child up? To me, none of that sounds right. But there's got to be more to this. The, excuse me let, me, let me, let me keep going with the story. Sheriff Judd says that Fitzgerald, that woman on the right-hand side of the screen, told the boy to come outside and get in her car. What kind of a relationship does she have with these, these so-called parents? Let me tell, I, I, I'm so confused by this. It's just really hard for me to believe. And I know y'all might look at this and wonder how I draw these conclusions. And shout out to my brother, Tommy. But we've heard these stories many, many times. And let me tell y'all this. This sounds like it's a single mom that this boy lives under her roof. You want me to tell you why? Because what father is going to let some grown-ass woman come pick his son up? 
and take him to the honey, the honey house. And then turn around and call your house and disrespect you talking about, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to your kid. What type of parenting is that? She called and told the boy to come outside and get in her car. The, I want y'all to imagine, what if this was a man who called a mother's house and told her, uh-uh, I don't want to talk to, your, to you, I want to talk to your 11-year-old daughter. What if instead, if that was a commissioner woman, what if it was a man that called your house and asked to speak to your 11-year-old daughter? What would y'all think? Huh? Would you treat it differently? Is it different because she's a woman? Is it different? If we're talking about equality, we're going to see how equal and fair people are going to be about this. The boy said he thought Fitzgerald was going to give him money or a gift for finishing his school year. Y'all saying she's a friend of the family? That's what it sounds like to me, because none of this, unless you add friend of the family in there, none of this sounds right at all. But the boy said that he thought that she was going to give him money or a gift for finishing school. And again, that don't, that don't sound right at all. Now, the boy then reported that that woman confronted him about sexual allegations that happened last year that made the 13 year old that, that the 13 year old had made Fitzgerald then threatened him. She threatened to kill this boy if he ever communicated or touched the 13 year old again. I'm assuming that, sh that that's a girl. Now, according to the affidavit, the boy said that Fitzgerald took the gun out of the bag and showed the boy the gun which actually makes sense because if you think about it if the gun was in a bag how would the 11 year old boy would have known what was in the bag wasn't that just justin timberlake that asked what's in the box do y'all think that if this story happened the way that this crazy woman describes this story how many 11 year olds let alone a 13 year old will see a bag underneath the seat and think, oh yeah, there must be a gun in there. I don't think anybody in their right mind, even a grown person would look underneath the seat and see a brown bag and think, oh yeah, there's a gun in there. That don't even sound right. Fitzgerald then threatened to kill him if he ever communicated with or touched the 13-year-old again. Now, according to the affidavit, now, according to the affidavit, Fitzgerald took the gun out of the bag and showed him the gun and threatened to bury the boy alive. Fitzgerald then kept the gun in her lap while driving the boy from the honey house back to his home the boy reportedly told investigators now he is also excuse me he also said he thought that Fitzgerald was drunk they said that she that he said that he was, she was drunk and he could smell alcohol on her breath now the boy said he was afraid of her and never wanted to see her again now the boy's mother confirmed to investigators that she didn't know that Fitzgerald was taking her son anywhere and didn't give him or and didn't give her permission. In the past, Fitzgerald had taken her son places, but had always gotten permission and told the boy's mother where they were going. I would love to know. Yeah, this is okay. Y'all are saying that she's a friend of the family. I want y'all to think about this. 
you didn't say that she was a relative of the family. There were people in the chat who said that she's a friend of the family and not an actual family member. Would y'all let y'all kids be just picked up and just taken off and, and done whatever with your kids with a, with a friend of the family? And we wonder why the rape, abuse, and murder is outrageous in our world. Because this is the type of thing that people are allowing folks to get away with. This woman did an interview and she said that she admitted to showing the boy the gun, but she said that she did not point the gun at him. So there you go. She lied. Every time you lie like this, especially when it involves children, I think you should get 10 years in prison. How about we make that a new law? Is, there, is, there, is everybody on board with that? Are y'all against that? Let me know what y'all think. If you lie about misusing, abusing a child, and we find out that you lied, 10 years in prison. That alone should be a felony and let people know to stop playing with our children. The affidavit said that the woman clarified what she said to the boy saying, I did, I did say I would bury him, but I didn't say alive. Like that makes it any better. She said, I did, I did say I would bury him, but I didn't say alive. You just can't be that level of stupid. The, po the Polk County Sheriff's Office on Thursday arrested Fitzgerald. She's facing two felony charges one count of interference with child custody and one charge or one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Fitzgerald is, is currently in the Polk County Jail with zero bond. So good for them. It sounds like they got this right. They said, we don't expect this kind of behavior from anybody, especially somebody in public office. She should be held to a higher standard and should be setting the proper example. Instead, she displayed what, what not to do as a human being. Her conduct, threatening a child with a gun, is horrendous. But let me let y'all hear from the man himself. Let me give y'all the fair usage. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Here are the videos. So developing tonight in Polk County, a Lake Wales City Commissioner is charged with pulling a gun on an 11-year-old boy. The accusations infuriated Sheriff Grady Judd. Fox 13's Aaron Mesmer joins us now live from the Sheriff's Office. I can only imagine what the Sheriff had to say, Aaron. Yeah, and to, to put it simply, Mark, the Sheriff says that this, these accusations are bad enough that they should make people question whether Commissioner Kristen Fitzgerald can be trusted to make decisions for Lake Wales. Now, Kristen Fitzgerald did something that was very bad. It was horrible. This is a familiar face to a lot of people in Lake Wales long before she ended up on a mugshot in Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd's hand. Kristen Fitzgerald is a Lake Wales City Commissioner, and now she's in jail. This city commissioner was way out of line. I mean, it should give everybody pause that she's making decisions for the city of Lake Wales. Sheriff Judd says Fitzgerald drove to a friend's house Wednesday and asked her friend's 11-year-old boy to get in her car. According to investigators, the commissioner was mad about an incident that happened last year and accused the boy of inappropriately touching another child. He denied it. But what happened next? She literally petrified him, scared him. Makes the sheriff furious. Kristen threatens the child, an 11-year-old child, and says, if you do that again, I'll bury you. She pulls a handgun out from under the seat and shows it to him while she says this. Judd says the boy heard something even worse. He said she threatened to kill me and bury me alive. Her statement was, 
I didn't say I was going to bury him alive. I said I was going to bury him. Did you hear what I said? Y'all catch that? Now, I got the full interview. Do y'all want to hear the full interview from him? Because I know I do. Let's go ahead and fast forward. Let's go ahead and let y'all hear this. This is absolutely crazy. But here we go. Let's get it. Some things that you just can't make up. And this is one of them. Let me introduce you to a lady who's in public office. She's a Lake Wells City Commissioner. Her name's Kristen Fitzgerald. She's 41 years of age. Now, Kristen Fitzgerald. And I agree with y'all in the chat. Why are we only hearing about this a year after the fact? Gerald did something that was very bad. It was horrible. On June the 2nd of this year, she went to a friend's house and on the cell phone told the friend's 11-year-old child to come outside. And she told him, get in the car. Well, he knew her. He thought, I finished school. I had good grades. Maybe she's going to give me some money or a present or something. And we're talking about a family friend. This is really, I think the, the biological mother might, might need to be investigated. What do y'all think about that? If y'all are listening, click the thumbs up. If y'all love the sheriff, click that thumbs up. I like this dude a lot. Get us 600 thumbs up. All right, here we go. This is late in the evening. He gets in the car. She leaves. She drives him down to Struthers Honey House, which is a business. Pulls him and, uh, and asks him if he had done something inappropriate with a, another child that she knows. And he denies it. This supposedly happened a year ago. Did you hear what I said? A year ago. This victim, who is 11 years old now, was 10 at the time. And the other child that was supposed to be involved in this was 12 at the time. So he denies it. At that time, Kristen threatens the child, an 11-year-old child, and says, if you do that again, I'll bury you. She pulls a handgun out from under the seat and shows it to him while she says this. Then she drives him back to his house with a handgun in her lap and lets him out. He's exceptionally upset, so he goes to his room and tells his older brother that Kristen just threatened to kill him. The older brother goes to mom. Mom notifies the sheriff's office of an armed disturbance, and deputies respond that night. As the investigation unfolds, it's turned over to the detectives. We find out that she has made admissions that she did that. When the young boy, the 11-year-old, is telling the story, he said, she threatened to kill me and bury me alive. Her statement was, I didn't say I was going to bury him alive. I said I was going to bury him. To me, that lets me know that this woman is slower than a bottle of molasses if you left it out in the snow for too long. I didn't say I was going to bury him alive. I said I was going to bury him. What? Let me let y'all hear that again. This woman is very, very slow. The young boy, the 11-year-old, is telling the story. He said, she threatened to kill me and bury me alive. Her statement was, I didn't say I was going to bury him alive. I said I was going to bury him. Y'all hear this. And this is not her child. Y'all would let somebody, y'all would let a family friend talk to y'all children this way? Huh. 
Only in Florida, man. Only in Florida. Did you hear what I said? Can you believe in 2021 that the lights haven't come on for her yet? That you can't threaten 11 years? And she's making decisions for y'all city, for y'all area. Think about that. For all the people talking about y'all don't believe in voting. Well, somebody probably voted for this woman because she resembles a black person. Let me say that again. We're always campaigning for people for their skin color and not for the content of what they bring to the table. Think about that for a minute as we start to come into these next set of elections and things like that. Where y'all constantly talk about, we need more black people oh, 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 in, in office and we need more black people doing this and doing that, right? We need more black coaches just because they black. We need more senators just because they black. Year old with a handgun in your hand, she literally petrified him, scared him. We went to arrest her. She gave us partial admissions. And then she said, but I didn't put a handgun at him. And all of the testimony we have is she didn't point it directly at him. She pulled it out and showed it to him and said, I'll bury you if you ever do that again. Folks, there's a lot of details. And I want to also point this out. Think about this. She wasn't talking about giving the boy a spanking, physically disciplining the boy. This woman is probably significantly bigger than an 11 year old child. She wasn't talking about spanking him. She was talking about shooting him with bullets, with gunpowder. Everybody understand where I'm coming from? Ending someone's life. Ending a child's life who was actually doing good in school. And you know what's even more messed up? Is this woman probably can't even prove this fabricated story talking about yeah, you was touching on my 13-year-old. Who's to say that the 13-year-old might not have made that up? Or maybe she was drunk and maybe made it up in her own head. Kids sometimes lie about silly, stupid things. Because they don't like somebody or whatever the case is. I'm just giving y'all something else to think about. But okay, we're not going we not going to tell his mom what he did. We're not going to go to put to the police about what he did. We're not going to report this to CPS. What are we going to do? The logical commissioner mind, the city leader's mind says, "Oh yeah, how about we murder the little boy?" Yes, let's murder the boy over it an alleged accusation that's the way her brain works while she's making decisions about what streets are being built in your city where what water sources y'all are getting out of y'all city or what laws they're getting ready to implement in y'all city right what programs they're getting ready to take away from y'all cities y'all understand where i'm coming from that we obviously can't discuss because it's protected information. But this city commissioner was way out of line. I mean, it should give everybody pause that she's making decisions for the city of Lake Wales when she's that irrational. Well, we have that firearm from her. She's currently in the county jail charged with a felony, an aggravated assault with a firearm. And she's also charged with uh, having the child in, inappropriately without permission of, of the parent. I can't even explain. I can't explain why someone does something like that. 
totally ir irrational, totally inappropriate, a felonious assault on an 11-year-old child by a city commissioner. She needs to wake up. We, you're held to a higher standard when you're in public office. She is supposed to set the positive example for the community to follow. What she has done is set the example for the community not to ever follow. So at the end of the day, she'll move through the criminal justice system as she faces her felony charges and the child is now once again home safe with his family and his family is livid beyond all expectation as you would be if someone threatened your child to bury them while holding a firearm. Any questions? Yeah, I'm more than happy to explain that to you. I'm, somebody, I'm not suggesting, you know, somebody says online she's a good person. There's a lot of good people. You know, even bad people aren't bad all the time. But it doesn't give a good person the right to be wrong occasionally. That was a horrible, felonious act toward an 11-year-old child by a 41-year-old woman who's also a city commissioner. We expect more of everybody in the community. And certainly, city commissioners and public officials are held to a higher standard. So regardless of what she thought, it was wrong. Oh, and did I add that the 11-year-old said he smelled alcohol on her? He thought maybe she was drinking or had been drunk or was drunk? So at the end of the day, I don't know what gets into some people to do to do the irrational things they do, but what she did was a totally irrational, felonious act while she's a city commissioner. Why did it take so long to arrest you? said it happened last year? She just now confronted him the other night from an event that allegedly happened a year ago. An event that the 11-year-old who was then 10 absolutely totally denies and at the end of the day all of that will be followed up as well but regardless you don't get to take the law into your own hands you don't get to have a few libations in the evening and then storm over to another person's home take their 11-year-old out of their house and then threaten them with a gun and to bury them. That's craziness. Anything else? Y'all take care. Have a good weekend. We'll see you when the next person does the most ridiculous thing you've ever imagined in your life. See you later. I like this dude, man. He's like, I don't know. Like his skin tone is different than mine. His age is different from mine, but his mindset is where mine is. And he knows that we have access to social media. So I like the fact that he uses his platform, being a police officer or whatever it is that he, being a sheriff and using it in a positive way to be able to make our world just a little bit better every moment he can. But shout out to Sheriff Judd, man. I really like him. I've seen a number of his videos, but let me say this in closing. <clears throat> The mother, because they specifically spoke about a mother. They didn't say nothing about a dad in that house, which further confirms my belief that this boy was being raised under a roof that only had a mother and no father, okay? Because the dad would not allow this to happen. This woman said, I don't want to talk to the mom, which would have fixed the situation. She said, I want to deal with the boy directly. And taking him to a honey house, I still want to know what type of business this, this local business this is. You went by your friend's house and picked up your friend's kid. This is not even a family member. I'd be sketchy about a family member. Let alone, I wouldn't even, I would never, ever let a family friend 
be around my kid alone. And this is a grown ass woman with a boy, a vulnerable boy. Let's not act like boy rape doesn't happen. Huh? Y'all remember that boy that got shot in the face and he had to basically walk the street blind because a grown man tried to rape that boy? Y'all remember I did that story. If you didn't see it, go back in my channel, watch that video. Boy rape happens often. We don't talk about it in America. We, we act like that doesn't happen to boys. It happens more often than you know where boys are misused and abused and taken advantage of. And guess who they're usually taken advantage of by? Women around her age. Yep. Women around her age. I just think it, it makes it more egregious the fact that she's actually a commissioner making laws for your, for your city, for your county, or whatever it is. Because it makes you wonder, what are the things that she signed off on? I think you need to go back and re-examine everything that she signed off on and be like, you know what? I'm not so sure that we made the right choice on that. We might need to re-vote on this. We might need to take another vote on these issues. I believe that this little boy talking about he was scared. I believe him. This boy said he saw a gun. I believe him. He said that she threatened to bury him alive. I believe him. That boy deserves his justice. He deserves his privacy. And this woman deserves a shit ton of time in prison. And matter of fact, she should automatically get 10 years. She should have a baseline and her cases should run consecutively not concurrently if y'all don't know what that means consecutive and concurrent concurrent means at the same time consecutive means one after another she should be forced to do 10 years in jail for lying on record then give her time for threatening and abusing that boy give her another 10 years i think 20 years would give this boy plenty of time to grow up become something great and be able to defend himself and give him time to emotionally, spiritually heal from this. 20 years sounds like justice to me. That woman should never be allowed to be around children and she should never be allowed to make another decision for anybody outside of herself. She's just not a stable individual. I'm DJ Just J and my opinion is just as harsh as Sheriff Judd we take a harsh stance, especially when it comes to defending our children. And we're going to advocate for children first. Give her a lot of time in jail. Let's see that that happens. Okay. Thank y'all for listening with an open mind and an open heart. Let's get justice for our babies together. If you see something, say something. All right. We'll see you guys on the next stream from my heart to yours. I love y'all. Y'all have a great day. We'll see y'all on the next stream. All right. Peace.